Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to look at some amazing work that some very old astronomers, not that they were old, but astronomers that lived very long time ago, were able to accomplish. And I'm talking about Aristarchus, it's hard to pronounce, and he was a Greek astronomer, lived more than 2,000 years ago. And he attempted to find the distance to the sun by observing the phases of the moon, and he got this brilliant idea. And indeed, it was a very brilliant idea. This is what he thought. He realized that the sun was probably really far away, much farther than the distance from the Earth to the moon. And we already had figured that distance out by using the technique of the total solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. And by and there's some video, I have a video out on that if you want to go take a look at it. But what's really interesting is they were able to figure out the size of the Earth and the distance to the moon and the size of the moon. So that was already known to a fairly accurate amount. But they didn't know how far it was to the sun or how big the sun was. And so what they tried to do, what our artist Arcus tried to do, is he came up with this brilliant idea. He said that when the moon is at its first quarter and third quarter, it is not exactly at right angles with the sun and the earth like that. It's not exactly in the orbit over here and the orbit over there, because he figured that the moon will be so far away from the earth in that direction and so far away from the earth in this direction that the sunlight would shine on the moon at this angle in this direction and at this angle in this direction and he could figure out that this angle right here let's call it theta and this angle right here call it theta could be figured out by knowing when exactly the first quarter and the third quarter would happen for the moon knowing it wasn't exactly there but a little bit before that point and a little bit after that point over here so what he tried to do is he tried to figure out what this angle is, and let, let me call that a different angle, I'll call that the angle phi, and he tried to measure that, and of course he didn't have any modern tools like we have today, modern telescopes and very accurate uh, apparatuses to, in order to be able to measure that. So he did the best he could with what he had, and he estimated that this angle was about 87 degrees. He figured out that the moon would be at its first quarter and third quarter at 87 degree angle with the line between the Earth and the Sun, of course, that's called the ecliptic plane. And therefore, he figured that this angle is therefore 3 degrees, so therefore this angle had to be 3 degrees as well. Now, it turns out he was off by almost a factor of 10. It's more like 0.3 degrees and more like 89.7 degrees, but again, he did the best he could. And the concept was brilliant because what did he conclude from that? He concluded that the distance to the sun was about 20 times the distance between the Earth and the moon. So 20 times the distance between the Earth and the moon. So that was quite an accomplishment. So what that meant was he figured out that the distance to the sun was much, much farther, 20 times as far as the distance from the Earth to the moon. And then based upon the size of the moon and based upon the size of the, and then the, the relative angle or you know, what we would call the angular size of the moon and the angular size of the sun, he figured out that the diameter of the sun, so the sun diameter, was equal to six times the diameter of the earth. So he figured that the sun was six times as big, at least in diameter, than the earth, which is again quite an accomplishment. So they concluded it is far, far away, much farther than the moon, and it's much bigger than the earth. Of course, we know that to be true, of course, he figured out 20 times the true distance is more like 400 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. And of course, this, the diameter of the Sun we know is more than 100 times the diameter of the Earth. So even though he wasn't able to measure the angle any more accurately, it was a brilliant concept and he actually did get a, 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 a presumption that the Sun was very big and very far away, which of course was true as well. If he had a better apparatus to do that with, he probably would have gotten much better results. So with the primitive tools he had, he did a fantastic job. And just thinking about that concept in itself more than 2,000 years ago was brilliant. Now it turns out that we didn't improve upon those measurements for almost 2,000 years. It wasn't until about the 1,500, 1,600 time period that our ability to measure the distance to the sun and the side of the sun became better with better tools and better techniques that we actually improved upon this technique. But it was almost 2,000 years before we were able to better this thing. So that was, that was an amazing accomplishment just to think about that. And just knowing, the understanding the phase of the moon 
and realizing that the sun was a spherical object, the earth was a spherical object, the moons were spherical objects, they were positioned like that, and the way the light would shine on the moon and, and cast different shapes to the moon. We have a crescent moon, a gibbous moon, a quarter moon, and based upon when that occurred in the orbit and what it looked like, he was able to figure out the distance to the sun. Even if it was inaccurate, a tremendous accomplishment.